first to take them on is Matt, with some medical mementos he hopes could be worth a mint. I collect this type of item, so it just drew my eye immediately. I thought they were quite unusual, quite rare. They just seemed to stand out as something unique. To help Matt identify a fair price, he'll start by getting an expert valuation from Simon, who's worked in the auction business for over 30 years. If I can reach £1,000, I'm probably going to buy some more items with the money, but I've also promised the kids pizza tonight. <laughs> so that's what I'm hoping for. Do you know what they are? That's a liver, I suppose, is it? Liver, brain, tongue and windpipe, I guess. I played a heart surgeon uh, in, a, in a TV series a few years back, and I went to see four or five open heart operations. Really? For, yeah. For the research side yeah. of things? Yeah, and I wasn't, it didn't worry me at all. Well. But this somehow, oh. <laughs> Should we get Matt in? Please. Matt, welcome to the bidding room. Where did you find them? I found them on an online sort of internet site. Oh, you collect them? I collect weird medical, strange models, yeah. That's my hobby. These are weird. <laughs> These are the weirdest I've got, yeah. Are you married? Yes. What does your wife think of all this? I've got a separate antiques room to hide it away. <laughs> I'm not entirely surprised. <laughs> OK, well, let's find out from our expert, Simon, what he thinks of these, Simon. <laughs> You've gone very <laughs> quiet. <laughs> no, but, I mean, so all jokes aside, I mean, there's a fascinating collection. I think they're probably going back maybe 1880s, 1890s, that kind of vintage. And we got this nice little uh, inset little plaque, maker's plaque for Bock Steger, who were, were well known for doing anatomical models. Right. German company. And um, obviously used, you know, for medical students and, and lectures and all that kind of thing. Collectible? Oh, absolutely. You've got that sort of, as Matt is, sort of fascinated by the macabre and the ghoulish, if you like. But then you're pulling in <laughs> medical collectors as well. If you don't mind my asking, what did you pay? Uh, three hundred pounds for the six. Yeah. Oh, well. Who do you think will will sort of open James this? James G all over? James loves anything memento mori, macabre. Right. Why don't you go ahead and ask Simon? What are they worth? Yeah. <laughs> I've been trying to sort of do little tot ups in my head as we've been going along. I can see a thousand pounds, yeah, but it's just you know whether it's just under or just over. I'm thinking you know if they paid round the thousand mark, they would probably retail them then at thirteen, fourteen, fifteen hundred maybe. Depends how confident they are. So how would you feel about a thousand? Very happy. Yes. Very good man, <laughs> man. So to sum up. To sum up, well, I mean Matt's got the real wow factor with these when he takes them next door. I think James will be all over them straight away. You know, he's got the medical interest, he's got the, the quirky nature, he's got the macabre, all these different elements coming together. And, you know, they're anatomically correct as well. Great. Well, very best of luck in there. Stick to your guns, and I think you'll do really, really well. So, Matt is off to face the dealers, including James, who regularly sells these kind of curiosities, and Tash, who also likes to trade in unusual items. Simon and Nigel both think that James is the person to go for them, so I think I'm just going to connect with him. Look, I love them. How much do you love them? Buy them off me and hope that the other dealers will, will bump them up for me along the way as well. That's my plan. <laughs> Hello. Hi there. Hey. So what's your name? Uh, Matt. Hello, Hello Matt. Matt. Hello, Matt. Hi, Matt. We're just here having a look, trying to guess what's underneath. OK, good luck. Why don't you put us out of our misery and show us? Wow. Wow. Cool. <laughs> Brain on a plate. Just what I wanted. <laughs> Good. Where did you get this lot from, then? Uh, internet auction site. And what made you bid on them? I collect medical stuff. Oh, well, there you go. So, <laughs> OK, yeah, yeah. OK. That's, yeah, I'm weird. That's a I good like enough it. reason, though. Yeah, yeah OK. The best have, you reason, got, I think. have you got loads of it? Quite a bit, yeah. Have you? Yeah. Hi, folks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I found this lying around. Oh, I forgot oh that one. Oh, my God, that's... At last, some brains in the room. Can I have mine with chips, please? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Good to see you. Yeah, great. I'll go have a quick shufty. Bock... Ste 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 Bock Steger. There you go, that's pronunciation, yeah. They are absolutely fantastic. Matt, can I ask you a question? Of course. Have you got a tissue on you? Yes. 
Could you just take one over to James because he's dribbling? <laughs> I, can, I can just, oh, I can just feel his mind going, and he's. I've heard he's James. Really... I've heard James is my man. But what age are these? Eighteen uh, eighties. Have they all been hand decorated? Hand painted, the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah. Wow. What's your favourite piece? Oh, it's definitely this one because I've not seen that one before. As I think I've seen the others. So um, yeah, yeah I think no, that's... they're very much things I've sold in the past. There's plenty of people out there that would love these. They're a collector's item, but they're also very decorative. If you're not squeamish, they look very good on a chest of drawers or, you know, a console table, so... Yeah, that's how I've had them. You can hang them on the wall as well. The brain's gone on the wall, the tongue's gone on the wall. It's in my room. Did you say the tongue's gone on the wall? Two, I had two yeah. tongues, two brains. How else, how else are you going to display them? You know? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Matt, you've made my day. Good, I'm glad. <laughs> if you sell these today, what are you going to need some money for? I'm going to buy more weird things. <laughs> I knew he was going to say that. <laughs> um, I think we need to start bidding, do you guys? After a thorough examination, all the dealers seem interested. So, can Matt top the £1,000 valuation? We'll start at £100. 150 200 Steady on. Sorry. <laughs> 220 230 240 250 260 300. 310. 320. 330. 340. I'll do 350. That would be my final bid. 360. 370. 380. 390. I'm actually going to pull out. OK. Thank you. But thank you. Oh, I'll go 400. Round it up, 400. <laughs> knowing what I like to pay for these, knowing I need to make a profit, I'll go 420. Because I know who needs to get these, I am going to pull out. OK. We're far off, if I'm honest. How far off are we? I was hoping for a thousand pounds for the lot. Ouch. <sighs> See, I don't know if I'd get that, and I'm good at selling them. That's what Simon believes I should be aiming for. Well, OK, at this point, I'm going to say I'm out, and I think if there was one person that was going to end up with him, it would be James, down to you. So what did Simon value these at? So Simon said they should be a, a 1000 For me, that's top retail, so I can't pay a 1000 for them on that basis. I'd probably go to 650 The collector in me, Tell me I'm never going to see a box tiger model in my life again. <laughs> <laughs> and you know that. To let them all go at 650. Ah. How about I keep one of the brain sections <laughs> you can choose, <laughs> and for seven you can have the rest. So the collector in me is happy, <laughs> but the wife will be happy with the 700 pounds. <laughs> is that too much of a chunk out of it? Just a slice. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say 650? No. <laughs> Did you not? 6.75. Let's be gentlemen, split it in the middle. OK, 6.75. And I keep which one, which brain sex sliced. All right, deal. Is that okay? Sounds good. Deal. Yeah, wow, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant. Matt, that's a very good negotiation. So, James, what are you going to do with them? Display them on your wall? Um, no, I'll, I'll just... I will literally... Um, I'll sell them individually, but I'll group them collectively for the photographs. Yeah. So I should be OK. Yeah, yeah. you will. You will. <laughs> Do you want to say what you paid for them, or is that...? I paid three. Yeah. Well done, sir. That was yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a good buy. Yeah. So Matt falls short of the £1,000 valuation, but he keeps one model and still goes home happy. Didn't quite make the thousand pound mark, but I've got to keep one of the models. So, in, in a way, I, I'm quite happy with the value that I got. Uh, I'm more than doubled my money with it, so I'm, I'm happy there. Look at you with your body parts. I need a new <laughs> liver. <laughs> <laughs> Our next guest is Nikki, who's in the dark over something she discovered hiding in her family home. 
We knew that it was probably quite old and probably of interest, but we had to do a little bit of um, research to even find out what it was. We thought perhaps it was something to do with playing cine film, um, but actually it was something totally different. Hello, Nikki. Hi. Thank you for bringing this, well, this object. I know what it is. Ah, well, we really didn't have a clue. Oh, right. My dad used to collect um, items that he thought might be a little bit interesting. Um, unfortunately, my, both my parents died last year, and my brother and I came across this in the loft. Yep. And it was my sister-in-law that said, well, let me see if we can find out what it is. Yes. You discovered that it it's is... It's a knife sharpener. Yes. It's a big knife sharpener. Huge. So anyway, let's have a word with Simon, our expert, who's right on hand, to tell us, because he knows everything. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm the, the oracle on knife sharpeners. I, I do see quite a lot of them. They were pretty sort of mass-produced. <laughs> They're by the, the chap with the wonderful name of James Osborne Spong. I just love that name. And he was born in the 1830s, I think, if I remember. But he started the company when he was only 16 Ooh, in, Lon in London. Yeah, brilliant. So he was a pretty entrepreneur of his yeah. day, wasn't he? I think this particular model might be one that's known as a servant's friend. Um, right. Because that one did from one to three knives at the same time. And they were very popular. I guess their heyday was probably 1880s, 90s, that kind of vintage. Yeah. There's even documents that say that Queen Victoria had a Spong sausage mincer. Which sounds rather serious, doesn't it? Oh, I don't want to catch that. <laughs> no, exactly. But nowadays, the market, purely decorative item. It's still got its original um, maker's label. It's had nothing done to it. Handle is original. It's, you know, as it was 120, 130 years ago. Ones as good and original as, as this don't turn up that often, so... No. It's got a lot going for it. So, what would you like to make from this? Do you have any idea? We're open to offers. Simon, how much do you think it's worth? I think when it's sat in front of the dealers next door, Nicky's going to come home with... I reckon about the 150 mark. If it made 150, we'd be delighted. Points to take next door for Nikki. I think it's the servant's friend model, so throw that in at some point. Servant's friend. By the wonderfully named James Osborne Spong, by royal appointment, and it's in nice original condition, and that counts for so much. So, best of luck. I'm thinking of you, fingers crossed. Simon valued it at around 150 pounds. I might be able to push um, the dealers up a little bit on that. I think it's down to me to um, really try and sell it to them. Hello. 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 And what is your name? My name's Nikki. Hello, Hello Nikki. Nikki. Hello, Hello. Nikki. I think I know what this is straight away, but let's see what everybody else thinks it is. It's definitely a tombola, you know, one of the old tombolas. Oh, is that what it is, James? Yeah, 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 yeah. From here, it could be a knife polisher. Almost right, it's a knife sharpener. Sharpener, OK. Yeah, I've seen a few of these. It's in its original condition. It is between 120 and 150 years old. Why did you buy it? Um, this was in my father's loft. Ah. This brings back so many memories for me because I, I bought one of these when I first got into the business um, and I thought I'd bought a pot of gold. Because I'd, ne <laughs> I'd never seen one. And then you walk around antique fairs and you see them and you think, blimey. There's a lot of them out there. There's a lot of them out there, but they're beautiful to look at. They make fantastic displays. Obviously, I don't suppose anyone's going to use it. Well, my understanding is it is still in absolute working order. And the delight of functional items is you don't actually have to use them. It's nice to find somebody who likes functional items, isn't it? It is quite nice, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to give it a little bit of a spin. Oh, do that, oh, Tash. Do. Well, oh, it's actually got um, a plaque on the front. Spong & Co. manufactures. Oh, Spong. They're really quite famous, aren't they? Paint and Tees, London. Yep. My oh, understanding God. is appointment to royalty. Yes. And was um, very, very um, much the manufacturer of the time in the late 1800s. I don't know if it'd be clockwise or anti-clockwise, but it spins both both ways anyway. This is lovely, I have to admit. I really need a knife sharpener as well. So, Nikki, really cool item, so I think we need to start the bidding. 
the knife sharpener's been valued at £150. But it's far from unique, so can Nicky convince any of the dealers to pay that price? I'll start you at £50. I can tell you that it's not my area of uh, joy, so I won't be bidding. I'll go 60. We all know that there's many of these items around, but you're not going to find that many in original condition, absolute working order. You're very good, aren't you? <laughs> she is. Are you, in, uh, are you in sales, Nikki? I'm not. My father was. I see. It's in my the blood. My father was, and he would really want me to sell this item for what it is. Um, so, you know, you could put it in a restaurant, and it's going to be a talking piece. I'll go 65. I have been told that in the condition it is, and the, with the manufacturer that it is, that it is worth substantially more than the offer you've put on the table at the moment. Nikki, it's not really my bag. It's great, but I'm out. I'm afraid I'm stepping out as well, but thank you. No, thank you. I'm happy to do 70. I'm buying a knife sharpener, so this is not going to actually be going on display anywhere. This is something that's for my kitchen. Yeah, that's... I'm out. Are you? Yeah. I'm not going to push further than 70, I'm afraid. Should I tell you something? Go on, then. I'd really like it to go somewhere where I knew somebody was going to look after it. Tash would give it a really good home, wouldn't she? Yes, she would, actually. I'll offer you 75. And that's... that will be my max. So do we have a deal? We have a deal. Fantastic. So Nikki decides to sell at half of Simon's £150 valuation. I'm very happy to have sold it for £75. Um, my dad would be proud of the fact that I'd haggled a little bit. Tash is going to use it in her kitchen, so it's a good, good result all round. She was lovely. She was, wasn't she? Yeah. When we go around Tashi's house for steak, if we can't <laughs> cut through it, you know she hasn't used it. I haven't cooked it properly then as well. Third in is Daniel, with a piece that's something of a party starter. The item that we've brought today, me and my family have had lots and lots of laughs around it. We'd like to pass it on for someone else to have their fun with. Thanks for coming in to the bidding room and bringing this piece of furniture. Yeah. Tell me all about it. My mum's had it for about six to eight years. It was used for, as a... A drinks cabinet. Huh. Yeah. I don't really know much any about it, the history of it. OK. Well, let's open up, then. Here we go. Simon. It is a drinks cabinet. Daniel's quite right there. We've got the slide-out tray there, which I'm guessing was for... You'd have your upturned glasses, maybe, on that. Classic walnut veneer. But I love these sort of raised mm. um, escutcheons and hinges here, which are quite nice. It gives that air of quality about it, doesn't it? Original key there with a nice brass lock plate on it. And then we've got a cabriole leg. Yeah. And those nice sort of hairy paw feet. Uh, Date-wise, it was probably made in the, in the 1950s, I think, Daniel, that sort of period, you know. The whole style of it goes back to early 19th century. And then, you know, nice original condition. A little bit rickety, maybe like that. Just needs the joints tightening up. Which, which holding all that booze. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's the it's weight. Exhausted. It's the weight. <laughs> These drinks cabinets have had a little bit of a revival in the last few years. So retro. Know. Yeah, exactly, that yeah. Ret whole retro vibe. Yeah. Anyway, I suppose the time has now come. Yeah. To ask that burning question you've been dying to ask, so I'll let okay. you go ahead and do it. What's the item worth? There is, it's one of those things, they'll either think, I've got a buyer for that, or, or they won't sort of go for it at all. It's, it's one of those kind of things. But hopefully, Daniel will be able to push them to probably around the 100, 150 pounds mark. That's where I personally see it. But, you know, if they've got somebody at home screaming for one, 
they might they might go a bit more. Yeah, hundred, hundred and fifty. Hundred. That... You're not going to go home with it, are you? No, I won't be going home with it. Yeah, only if it's full. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel's got to work pretty hard next door, I think, to to yeah. give the dealers a a kick. Just push the fact that it's mid twentieth century. It's got that nice retro vibe walnut veneer and it's still functional even in today's society and hopefully that'll g the dealers along okay i wish you the best of luck you're gonna have to work quite hard but thank you very much it was a little bit disappointing if i could tell you the truth i reckon it's a canon all right <laughs> unicorn i think it's a flat screen television hopefully they'll get their hands in the pockets and give me a little bit more than what simon's valued it at he's got some Sexy legs there. Hello there. Hi. Hello. Hi. Are you okay. Hi. Hello. How are you, how are you doing? I'm okay. Thanks for coming. What's your name? It's Daniel. Hello, Hello Daniel. Daniel. Hello, Daniel. You okay? We've been checking out these um, lovely feet here. Not yours. Those. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so go on then. Aha! I like. Drinks cabinet. You've got it in one. Oh, can you open it up I for will. us? OK. OK, who's going to go? Can have a look? Go have a look. This is when people used to literally say, would you like a drink, darling? You know, little finger out, yeah. having a pinky. Um, yeah, it's nice. Great colour, isn't it? But normally, when you open these things, they dazzle you because they've got a really bright-fitted interior. Not taking it away from it, but that's... Oh, there's a glass drawer as well. Oh, OK. Ah. The drink slime. Yeah. So, I'll do your pims. I'll do your pims. Can I have a snowball? Ian, have you got any crisps? Oh, <laughs> I'm just doing <laughs> So, anyway, do your drinks. And when you're finished... Yeah. Yeah. I would say between circa 30s, 1930s, 1950s. It's nice. Good thing. Yeah. I like it. We've had a lot of good times around it at Christmas time. Yeah, I'll It's normally full when it's at <laughs> my mum's. <laughs> Why is it that you're selling this, Daniel? It's just in the way at my mum's now, so she wants shut of it, really. OK. Hopefully, I'll go on holiday with it, with the family. Anywhere nice? It just depends on how much you've got in your wallets. Lack of purses. <laughs> a wet weekend in Weston? <laughs> a wet weekend <laughs> somewhere it'll be. <laughs> right, so, uh, let's start the bidding. The dealers seem to be getting into the party spirit, so it's now over to Daniel to push them above Simon's 100 to £150 valuation. I think I'll start the bidding at uh, forty pounds. But you've got to start somewhere. You have indeed. I'd yeah. much rather start there. I'll give you fifty pound, Daniel. Okay. Anybody else? You've been quiet in the corner. It's just a bit Del Boy for me. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's a few Del Boy candidates, yeah. but I think um, <coughs> Ian um, <laughs> probably. The, Can I just say one. this time next year we'll all be millionaires? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 60. Think of the fun you can have filling it up. And Ooh, 65. It. 65, come on. <laughs> Anybody else? It's not my style. I love the legs, though. You could be sat next to that, just opening it up. And you could take the key with you so no one else could get in it and lock so it. So you could lock your drinks <laughs> up, yeah. Is that what you used to do? <laughs> well, my mum used to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for me. OK. But thank you. You're welcome. It's between me and you, then, isn't it? All right, Rodney. <laughs> 70. Come on, a little bit more. It's all original. Monge <laughs> 2, Monge, Monge 2. 2, Monge 2. Come on, Ian, get your hand in your pocket. All right, <laughs> all right Daniel. £75. 80. 80. I'd like a little bit more for that, right. please. Go on, Ian's the one to give you a little yeah. bit more, then. I will give you a little bit more, £85. Yeah. Pounds. Come on, we've got an holiday to pay for and drinks to buy. Yeah, and I've got a <laughs> cabinet to pay for it. Yeah, right? and you've got to fill it up. <laughs> Go on, Ian, give him another yeah, five. I think you five, should get a bit more. Five, Come on, Ian, 90. That, if I give you 90 quid, will it do the deal? It'll do the deal. I'll give you 90 quid, then. Deal's done. Done? Done? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> It's £10 under Simon's lower valuation, but Daniel's wheeled and dealed himself to a £90 sale. A little bit less than what I thought I'd get for it, but it's I'm not taking it back home with me. While Del Boy Ian is a happy man. Can I let you into a little secret now? Yeah. I love it. 
Every one I have of these, I sell, and I don't know why, but I do sell it, sell them really quickly. Well, you've got yourself a bargain, then, haven't you? <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, Thanks, Daniel. So, my place for cocktails, then. Hang on, we can't even get him to pay for a round of drinks in the bar, let alone <laughs> fill that up. <laughs> Next to arrive is local restaurateur Padgery, who's something of a stamp collector and also determined to put Simon through his paces. This uh, first day covers I bought today, I believe uh, is collectible. If Simon tell me it's worth nothing, he better to go and study antiques again. What have we got here? Well, it's, it's an album of first day covers. I've got a few first day covers with my face on them because of Jared's fire. So you're actually, actually on one of the stamps? Yeah. That's <laughs> quite something. So then they, when you do that, they send you masses of them and stamps. Your signature on the Jared's fire. That's what you'd want. Maybe we should get Padgin. Have a yeah, chat. and I'll continue having a route through. Absolutely. It's Padgery. How lovely to meet you. Hi. Where did you find those? Like an antique shop in Halifax. And what did you pay for them? About £60. Pounds. £60? Pounds. For the whole lot. So you thought it was a good time to sell? Yeah. Why not? Yes. Simon, what do you think? There's certainly plenty of them to have a look through, isn't there? Queen's Silver Jubilee from 1977. Then, of course, we've got the all-important first day of issue postmark. So you'd get your freshly issued stamps from the Royal Mail, you'd attach them to the envelope, send them off, and then they'd come back with the first day of issue stamp on them, which is what you wanted as a collector. Patrick, how much money would you like to make? As much as uh, they can get, because uh, I decided to donate this money to hospice. Oh, that's really kind. That's yeah. great. Without further ado, it's time to ask how much does Simon think it's worth? <laughs> <laughs> um, I see many, many of them. I think if, if they were coming up in a general auction, yes. we'd struggle, and I could see them making maybe sort of 10, 10 pounds at the most. 10 pounds each or the whole lot? For the whole lot. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so long as she pushes the fact that uh, all the money's going to charity, I think the dealers will, will look after her well next door. Padre, thank you very much for bringing them in. Thank you. <laughs> Ten pounds. That was ridiculous. Well, I hope she does well. Simon said it's about ten pounds. I thought the ten pounds each. Never been the easiest things to sell at really? auction, you know. No. If he's mean ten pounds a whole lot. Mm -mm, no. <laughs> Hello, everybody. And welcome to Padgery. Hello, Padgery. Hello. If you're interested in Thai food... Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. What time are you open till of an evening tonight? <laughs> Fully booked, I'm sorry. But we're not here to get the stamp of approval for her food. There's money to be raised, and as much as possible. She's going to give this, the proceeds of this to charity, by the way. I just want to leave you that. OK. okay. So, Which charity are you looking to give the proceeds to? Hospice in Halifax. Go on, Tash. Do you want to have a first okay. look? I'm going to... It's a really unusual collection. Lots of different designs, and they're in immaculate condition. And they go from 1967 up to 1991. I actually have a stamp collection at home, not as wow. presented as this one. Anyone else want to have a look? I do like ribs, by the way. Did you spare ribs? The best. <laughs> Are they lovely? Simon tell me it's collectible and uh, good condition. Yes. I have to say, I'm not a big lover of stamps. I, they make me yawn. I'm not a big fan, but I think they're beautiful. Right, come on then, let's get cracking. Who's going to start bidding? Simon valued the collection at £10, much to Padgery's dismay. But with the dealers already eating out of her hands, might they offer her considerably more? I'll start five. Ten. Thirty. Ooh. Oh. Oh. It's Bold. for charity. Yeah. Come on, guys. Thirty-five. This is your chance. <laughs> Don't let it go. <laughs> oh, forty. Go on. I pay more than that. <laughs> oh, did you? I'm not telling you. Fifty. If you think it's not worth that much, I will take it home. But 
I remember every one of you. <laughs> <laughs> but when we walk in, see each other, just double. 55. 60. 70. You're generous, but not enough. How close are we? Not even near. <laughs> You're a canny lady, you are. <laughs> <laughs> just give us a clue. Is it three figures or two figures? <laughs> not five. I let this go, and uh, for for the cause that brings you go to heaven. <laughs> Your name in good book. Right, I'm at a, I'm in at hundred quid then. <laughs> You're bidding a hundred. I'm in at hundred. Yeah, I want to be on the good book. You see. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to go to heaven with me? <laughs> <laughs> right. On that note, then let's crack on. I'm out. James. I'm out. Sorry. Um, I'm going to be out. I'm afraid. OK, so we're going to heaven. Yeah, that's all right, then. 110. 120. <laughs> 130. Not good enough. 150. OK, I'm out, I'm afraid. I can't accept that money because uh, in my mind, I have a bit more than this. And uh, thank you very much. I'm so sorry we couldn't get the bids high enough for you no um, on this occasion. What you should have done is got a big tray and a trolley and cooked one of everything on the menu oh. and we'd have paid you a fortune for You'd it. You'd have had some <laughs> big money for that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for coming in. You've been a real sport. You can take your stamps home and love them and sell them in another few years' time. I have in my mind 200 pounds and uh, I didn't get that gold. And uh, I decided not to sell and take it home. Don't know about you lot, but I'm starving now. Yeah, no, I am too. <laughs> Last to do the rounds is Simon, with a toy that won't appeal to vegans. It's a wooden toy on wheels, um, and I would say it's fairly rare, because I've only ever seen two. And mind you, better condition than the one in a museum, so I'm hoping that the uh, guys in the bidding room will be interested in it. Would it have had a churn? Well, yes, yes, or I guess even maybe little milk bottles. What do you reckon to that? I think both would have been nice. A full-size pint milk bottle, actually, would sit in there quite... And, and look like a churn. It looked like a churn, wouldn't it? <laughs> anyway, let's get Simon in. Hello. Hello. How are you? Oh, good. So, tell me, where did you buy it? I bought it off a well-known auction site. You were looking for a cart? No. I recently bought a um, Triang pedal car, so I was looking for more of those. Uh, OK. And searching Triang, that came up, and I quite like the look of it. Nobody else bid on it. What did you pay for it? I paid £100 for did it. Did you? Mm. You think it was a good deal? Yes, I didn't think I'd done too badly, cos I couldn't find another one anywhere else. I thought, this is something that's not, you know, it's quite a rare item. I'm not sure of the year it was made, but their first toys were all wooden. They started in 1919. So I don't know the exact year of when that was made, and that's well, what I'd like to find out. thank heaven Simon is our expert is here, because <laughs> he knows all about Triang toys, don't you, Simon? Well, I've seen a fair number over the years. Simon Spot On, formed just after the First World War. Uh, Lines Brothers, Triang, because three lines, three Lines Brothers. That's how the name came about. And, yeah, I think you're right, Simon, this must be one of the early ones, because we've got plenty of that wooden element going on. I just love the... Uh, little tin labels. I can just about read this one, Nigel. It says, Triang Toy Dairy, Grade A Milk Butter, Eggs and Cream. Triang in general, as you know, very collectible, very much sought after. And when we're coming back to the early period, obviously the, the collectability goes up. So when we get to an item like this, I mean, in 30 years, I've probably seen another two or three, you know, so it's... They don't turn up often at all, so... And of course, they were a very trusted toy maker, weren't they? Oh, yes, yeah. You know, yeah. they were selling everything worldwide. Yeah. Um, from pedal cars to little carts. Who's going to spend a fortune buying this? Who's going to spend a fortune buying this? Well, I, I, think, I think our AD will have a good pop at it. Um, so will Ian. Maybe Tash, because it's a sort of small size. No, I'm quite confident that uh, Simon will get a, a fair bit of attention with it next door. I think the time has counted now. Asked that important question, which is Simon. How much is it worth? You. Oh, well, I think Simon's got a nice rare item. I can see it definitely in the 
130, 160 bracket. Mm -hmm. But points for Simon to remember, early Triang, I reckon about late 20s, 1930. Highly collectible. I've only seen a handful in 30-odd years. Yep. And oh, it's, it's originality will sell it. Good. Anyway, Simon, thanks for bringing it in. It's a little treasure, isn't it, really? Mm. Nice to meet you. And you both. Good luck, fingers crossed. Thank you very much. Okay. I feel reasonably comfortable, a little bit nervous maybe, but um, I can hold my own. I'm good at working deals and hopefully I'll be able to put over the plus points of the item and get the best price for it. Hello. Hello. Can you tell us your name, please? I'm Simon. Hello, Hello. Simon. Hello. So, a little crate on wheels. Yes, it's a um, Triang toy dairy cart. It's so cute. It really is. And um, I'm going to look straight at somebody over there. I like it. <laughs> uh... You're going to give it a little push? I don't want to give it a push right now because you need somebody small. Um, Ian, why don't you give us a little... <laughs> why, don't... why don't you give us a little... Can you see what I have to put a little bit? I get positively <laughs> picked on. Are you feeling it, AD? <laughs> I am. I'll have two pints, please. Yeah, well done. Yeah. Then it might be a while. Hard work being the milkman, isn't it, mate? He is these days, yeah. I like it. Surely you would probably have little milk bottles in this. It would have had little milk bottles and uh, a couple of churns, I believe. Yeah. Where are they? They, they never came with them when I bought them. Oh, really? It. No. Okay. And it is a very rare piece, 1920s to 1930s. I've seen a lot of Triang stuff around my age, around the 60s here. Yeah. So they were going for quite a while, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, they started when they, um, just after World War I, 1919, just off the old Kent Road in London. The three Lyons brothers, William, Walter and Arthur. I have to say, um, I'm quite excited because I've, I've, I've had and I've seen the trying trains and the trucks and all the normal stuff. Um, and when I think about how many fairs and how many different countries I've been to buying, I've never seen that one. No, I haven't. I actually really like this. Oh. Do you, sir? I do. I actually do like oh, this. Bless I already you. know that I need to put my uh, water bottles in something because they're currently on the floor. Everything's uh, on the floor in my kitchen. They'd look lovely. They look, that? Yeah, those those will fit my water bottles Tash in. Tash loves something she can use. <laughs> so I do. Got a bit of competition going on here, AD, I'm afraid. So I think, guys, we ought to start the bidding. So, despite interest in the toy milk cart, Simon will have to work hard to top the 130 to £160 valuation. Let the bidding begin. I'm looking at you, AD. No, I'm, I, <laughs> it's something that I really wouldn't want to buy. You don't no, want to do um, no, no. I don't want it. It's I mean, all right. it's pretty, but no, I'm going to say I'm out. Oh, you're milking it now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm only going to bid as much as it's going to be for my water. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to throw in £30. Okay. Forty pounds. Um, I'm dairy free on this occasion, so <laughs> I'm out. Sorry. <laughs> Don't keep looking at me. I'm out. Yeah, right. Oh yeah, you're in and out more than the hokey cokey. Um, as beautiful as it is, it's not the sort of thing that I buy. So I am going to be out. Okie dokie. They're out there, lady. It's between you two. Yeah, okay. if I buy it, you're not having it. <laughs> I'm out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 45. I'm just waiting for Aidy now. Or you can just accept my offer. I can tell you, you're a long way away from where it needs to be. £60. Pounds. Keep going. Come on, AD, you need to get in and get it up to the value that it should be at to start the proper bidding. <laughs> at, the, at the minute, this is nowhere near. Yeah, you heard the man. Stop messing about. Well, well I'll kick in at 100. Thank you. Oh, that's, that's what it is. Good starting figure. Yeah. Oh, starting figure. Yeah. Well, then that's over as my water crate, I'm afraid. I won't be bidding higher than £100, pounds, okay. so I'm out on that. Oh, well, thank you. I'm out too. OK. Thank you. I'm not there, am I? No, I'm afraid not. No. Where do you need to be? 160. The only thing I'm worried about is um, 
I specialise in one-offs. Mm -hmm. So I can't... Somebody can't come along and say to me, well, there's another one down the road for 30 quid cheaper. I don't know what that... I don't know what's that, what that's worth. The expert, Simon, said that he'd only seen a handful in 30-odd years of dealing. Oh, really? Yeah. They're that rare? Yeah. I'll give you 150. Bit more. All right, I'll give you 160. OK, we've got a deal. Do we have a deal, Simon? Oh, Fantastic! Hey! Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I love it. Really love it. How much did you actually pay for it? Well, I paid £100 for it eight years ago. So. Really? Yeah. Well done. It's probably one of the best items I've bought this year. I'm glad you're happy, and thank you. So the milk cart sells for £160, the top end of expert Simon's valuation, leaving AD and seller Simon both delighted with their deal. AD sort of showed his card straight away that he was interested. I've made a profit on it from when I bought it. I've enjoyed it for the last eight years, and I'm sure AD's going to enjoy it for a number of years before he possibly moves it on. I bet you're so chuffed with that, you look like the cat that got the cream. You've just turned <laughs> it sour. 